Okay, thanks, Mariana. My name is Daniel Opong. I'm based in Accra, Ghana, and I'm the MD for LIFU um, Africa. We've, we've been on a journey to help fight malaria on the continent and um, elsewhere in the world. And um, it's been a privilege to be part of this journey and our partnership with Merck. Unfortunately, Bettina, uh, Beatrice couldn't start, but then um, I'm going to take the lead and hopefully she can join us and continue from where I, I, I'll leave off. A quick introduction. Oh, just what I was about to start. Sorry, okay. but please go ahead. <laughs> no problem. Okay, that's fine. Go Sorry, on. everyone. <laughs> we carry on with Daniel. Yes, let's carry on with Daniel and I will, I will talk here. Uh, uh, we'll talk afterwards. No problem. Go ahead, Daniel. Okay. So, a quick introduction okay. to LIFU. Um, LIFU is a life science company um, started in the U.S. We we have presence on all five continents now, and our lead product is an insect repellent that we we're trying to get to everybody who who needs it, and practically everybody in um, any part of the world where vectors disease causing vectors are an issue. And as a result of that, we're trying as much as possible to use our live platform to get it to people um, who otherwise wouldn't have been able to get access to it. Our live platform actually works in diverse ways and it goes against the conventional way of distribution, manufacturing and getting products to people. And as a result of that, we, we are able to reach a lot more um, people on the lower end of the pyramid and in the mid than it would normally have been possible. How did LIFO start? LIFO is a global company, but then it started from Nigeria. And I believe I see a lot of Africans on the platform and we, we should be proud. Um, our, our founder, Hogan Basse, grew up in Nigeria and at the age of 10, he, he made the concussion in his mom's um, bathtub to, to help prevent him from getting malaria. And he, he, he says it better than anybody else can, but you, if, if you were around that time, you know that chloroquine and other uh, malaria treatments were not pleasant to, to take. And as a result of that, he said, okay, I don't have access to anything to stop mosquitoes from bite, biting me. Why don't I create something? And that is where the, the creation of um, our insect repellent started. Thank God he didn't die out of it, but it wasn't wasn't anything scientific. He just messed up some concussions, which um, luckily didn't kill him. And we built on that to a point where we have a product that is that is quite effective. I'd I'd want us to look at the the situation with malaria um, as at the end of 2019 and the world, um, sorry, 2020 malaria report, it's, it's quite obvious that there have been significant um, improvement in the fight against malaria since the year 2000, um, all the way to 2019. But still, if you look at 2014, 15 coming, it's, it's stagnated. That's, that's not to take into account the significant drop in malaria cases, 32% um, 30, drop in malaria cases between 20, 20 and 2019, um, a 44% drop in malaria deaths, a mortality rate reduced by 60, 67%. A billion deaths have been prevented, and this, this is quite significant. Uh, sorry, billion cases, over a billion cases have been prevented, and 7.6 million deaths have been, have been prevented. Yes, but let's not lose sight of the fact that in spite of all these significant achievements, um, the burden is still there. And we still have um, close to 230 million cases, infections um, were reported in 2019. And out of that, 409 million thousand deaths were reported. The greater burden of this is, is, is on infants under the age of five. And we all know what, what that feels to, to lose a, a young child right at the point where they're about to start life. So what can we do to, to help make this better? Again, this, this is a quote from 
Dr. Moidi. She, she's the regional director for WHO Africa region. And it's, it's a tacit acknowledgement of the fact that there's been significant improvement. And in spite of that, there's, there's a lot more that needs to be done. And there's a need for us to change the way we've been doing things or add to the tools that have been used um, in the past to make sure that the fight against malaria is won. LIFO and Merck have been in collaboration in getting to a repellent that is that is safe using max active ingredient, the IR 3535. It is by far one of the safest, very, very pleasant. And um, you you compare it to others on the market and you see that this this is this is um a unique product. In in the EU is is approved for use in, in young children. Um, I, I believe um, Bettina will talk more, Beatrice will talk more about this, but infants as young as um, two months at a certain concentration can be used, um, can use a repellent that's made out of um, IR3525. It has strong repe repellent performance against mosquitoes. It's pleasant. It doesn't, it doesn't have any odor. Um, it's safe to use. And it, as I said earlier, is safe for use in all ages and especially for infants below the age of five who bear the, the greater burden of um, malaria cases in, in the affected regions. LIFU's contribution to this is, is a unique patented technology, StayTech, which practically stops the active ingredient from leaving your skin. It, it, we encapsulate it, we stop it from being absorbed into your body and evaporating at, at, a, at a greater rate than we, we want it to. And as a result of that, we're able to extend the, the time of protection and also make sure that your, your body doesn't absorb unnecessarily um, the, the active ingredient. It stays on your skin where it's most needed and where it, it is supposed to protect you against um, the biting insects. Now, our, our technology is, is quite, quite simple. We, we, we using natural products to encapsulate, create a capsule that holds the active ingredient on your skin and stops it from, from leaving. Um, it basically stays there and that is where it stops the biting insects. And in this case, the, the most, um, troublesome one in, in Africa, where I'm based, and also the one that really caused a lot of problem with, with malaria, the, the, mosquito, the mosquito vector. A complete insect repellent bridges, brings together the IR3585 active ingredient from Merck and Astitech technology, and it's, it's a groundbreaking innovation in that it's able to take this very potent repellent at uh, IR 3535, keeps it on your skin for uh, 13 to 14 hours. It's been tested and we, we are very comfortable about, about its efficacy. Now, a lot of people would ask why insert repellent and why a complete insert repellent? Yes, we acknowledge the, the fact that there are a lot of tools out there already there's the indoor residual spray, there's the treated bed nets, there are other drugs and vaccines that have been tested. Ghana is, is a place that vaccines have been tested at the moment. But all these tools have their limitations. And as a result of that, we, we bring in this repellent to complement what they're doing. Uh, insect repellent is something that can be worn the whole day. You can go on a date wearing an insect repellent. It doesn't smell awful and um, your girlfriend would, wouldn't leave you because of it. Uh, as a result of that, we are confident that people will use it compared to other products that are on the market that you put on and you smell like um, you just had an acid or a drug bath. So we, we are very confident about the impact that this repellent can make in the fight against malaria and other insect-borne diseases because we, we, we are confident people will use it 
it doesn't smell awful, it's not greasy, it's, it's practically invisible once you apply it. And as I showed in one of the slides, the active ingredient itself is odorless. Our technology doesn't add any odor, but just to give you a feel that you have a product on and to give you the confidence that you have something, we have a very light scent to, to the repellent, which is quite pleasant. And we've, we've actually had um, studies where people say it felt and it felt and smelled like um, body lotion and they were very comfortable using it. Um, this is efficacy performance of uh, uh, repellent at, at a concentration of 20% IR at 535. It is it's very effective and as I indicated earlier, it protects you from insect mosquito bites um, for 14 hours. And this is not a test done on just um, an open environment, but actually in a in a cage test where we have 200 mosquitoes in a small box, and participants were putting their finger, their hand in, um, one hand protected, and the other were, were not protected. And for 14 hours, we, we we were able to show that that product was was quite effective at preventing the mosquitoes from landing. We we did a pilot in Ghana. Um, the product was de developed in the U.S. We said, okay, let's bring it to Africa. Let's test it against the, the Anopheles mosquitoes here. And um, one popular one that was mentioned to me at um, Noguchi, the Anopheles Gambia, quite, quite um, strong um, breed there. And we said, okay, let's test it. We, we all know that in, in a part of the world, malaria is a big problem. And there, there's a segment of the population that are very much exposed to, to insect bites. And one of them is the security guards who work in the night. So we, we partnered with a security company in, in Kumase, somewhere in the middle part of Ghana. We gave them protection, a um, hundred security guards, we, get, we gave them protection for 45 days. And yes, 97% of them reported insect bites on a regular basis. Um, when they work in the night. And as a result of that, they had to drag um, in the night, in, in the warm weather of, of Ghana. They had to wear gloves, wear long sleeves, thick jackets to prevent them from getting bitten. And even in that case, um, parts of their bodies that were exposed were still bitten. At the end of the 40, 45 day trial, what, what we're able to pick from them is that the, there were no malaria cases reported. Um, HITA2, the, the prevalence rate for malaria was about 73% among them. And 99% of them were satisfied with the, with the repellent because it felt good. Um, one, one comment was, it's nothing like what we've used before. It's pleasant and it's more comfortable to wear it. So that, that's a key comment and it's, it's something that's, that's been highlighted as a um, a barrier to adoption for, for repellent as, as a, an, an effective tool against malaria because people don't like wearing it um, when it smells bad. And we've been able to overcome that hurdle with, with this unique formulation. Um, we, we said, okay, will you buy a repellent? 94% of them said, yes, we'll buy it. Okay. The, the company too said, no, we, we won't let them buy it. We're going to pay for it because they, they had direct feedback from premises where they were, they were guarding, that your guards are more effective now. We see them making their night rounds. They are not sleeping in, in corners. They, they don't lock themselves up in the security cages. You actually see them moving around, making sure that the premises are protected. So the company said, okay, this, this is adding to the productivity of, of these people. And as a result of that, we are more than happy to, to procure it for them. And even at that point, the, the guy said, okay, we don't earn much, but we know there are people elsewhere in Ghana, um, specifically up north, who, who are struggling to, to get over the burden of malaria. And as a result of that, they were going to donate a percentage of their, of their salary to help us um, donate some product up north. Then 95, 94% of them again said, yes, they will use the repellent on a regular basis. They will buy it, and um, if it's made available, to, to them. Thank you very much. Um, this, this is a quick presentation.